Ah, the dodo. A dawdling, dumpy little dolt doomed to be devoured by Dutch deckhands until demographic decline destroyed it within decades. That's how the dory, sorry, story goes anyway. Dutch sailors arrive at the island of Mauritius, the dodo has no defenses or brains to get away, and then the plump, slow, dumb animals were simply eaten out of existence. And ever since, we've kinda just danced on the dodo's grave, using its name as a synonym for a person who is acting stupid, who's old-fashioned and unable to keep up with modern times, or very simply, just a dead thing. But what if I told you we had this story totally wrong? that the dodo was not eaten out of existence, and that it survived a number of environmental shocks before going down. And what if I told you that the myth of the dodo's death actually tells us way more about humans than it does our waddling little friend here? As we've mentioned in the past, with native avian populations declining around the globe, it really does seem like the birds have every right to be angry. So once again, the folks over at Angry Birds commissioned us to make another extra, extra history. In hopes that if more people understand a past human ecological mistake, we can help ensure a better future for all of our feathered friends. So what do you say, Red? Ready to launch into today's historical tale? Uh-huh. Okay, awesome. Just try not to sling me directly into the tower this time. I mean, I'm not light, but I don't think I'm going to do too much structural damage. Oh! <laughs> Nailed it! <sighs> Friends, may I present the Dodo, a three-foot-tall flightless bird living on the island of Mauritius deep in the jungle. Cut off from Madagascar and Africa, it had no fear of humans or defensive adaptations because it had no predators. When Dutch sailors arrived in 1598, they found the plump flightless bird would walk right up to them or could be easily lured, where they then killed and ate them for meat until there were no more dodos. According to some, even the name of the dodo was an insult. It may have come from the Dutch word for sluggard or fat ass or Portuguese slang for simpleton or crazy. And so they were thoroughly wiped out with ease. Or so we thought. Because due to recent studies of the few dodo specimens remaining in museums, DNA research, a mass death site, and the diaries of early sailors, a more complete picture has begun to emerge. Physically, the dodo was in fact no awkward bird, but rather highly adapted to its environment. Its jointed legs were powerful, perfect for climbing the mountains of its home island, and it could be quite fast. Its size meant that it had no predators, and therefore had lost most of its fight or flight response. Also, its brain was, relative to its body, about the same size of that of its cousins, the pigeon. However, like many birds, the parts that were highly developed were the parts crucial for finding food, specifically those governing sense of smell. And on the off chance it did need to defend itself, its large beak was actually a formidable weapon. The fossil record, too, is rewriting the idea that they were uniquely fragile and not adapted to survive. The island of Mauritius regularly had its ecosystem upset by cyclones and other large storm systems, meaning that the dodo would migrate in order to find better ecosystems if their original one was too damaged. They even seemed to have adapted their laying and hatching season to the annual cyclones, the chicks emerging in August so they could grow to adult size before the cyclone season in November. In other words, the dodo were not an outmoded species who couldn't adapt. Rather, they were hardened survivors who actually thrived in their environment. Okay, so if that was the case, were the humans just too much for them? Well, yes in a way, though these stories about the dodo being eaten to death are probably not accurate. Sailors did eat them, but they apparently didn't taste particularly good. Actually, one of those many insulting Dutch names they gave the bird translates to tasteless bird, so take from that what you will. Plus, it's unlikely that humans penetrated the thick jungles of the island to actually kill enough of them to make a real difference. No, it was all the other invasive animals who did that. If you've seen our episodes on hogs in history or Hawaii's avian apocalypse, you know that the most dangerous thing for native birds aren't humans, but all the animals we bring with us. Dogs and pigs were constants on ships and made their way ashore. And as Dutch colonists arrived in the mid-1600s, they also brought deer. And these introduced omnivores that would have been bad news for a bird species that was ground nesting and may have only laid a few eggs, possibly only one. Oh, but it was a delicious egg. In fact, it's been theorized that it wasn't humans preying on the dodo that really ended its reign, but rather all of these pigs, dogs, and deer attacking their nests. This would have caused far more rapid population collapse than mere hunting, especially when combined with the Dutch colonists rapidly deforesting Mauritius for ebony wood, giving the birds nowhere to shelter during the cyclone season. 
Okay, so Dutch sailors first reported the dodo in 1598, and the last sighting was in 1662. So in the course of six decades, a species that had endured for thousands of years as kings of their domain, top of the food chain with no predators, had been entirely wiped out. Which of course is what ultimately made them famous. But when and how was the myth created that the dodo was essentially too stupid to live? Well, first, we have to understand that while various accounts noticed that the dodo was getting rarer in the 17th century, no one really noticed when it went extinct. In fact, no one really understood that extinction was even a possibility. See, in the 1600s, the idea that a species could just cease to exist went against all the theological reasoning that governed how people thought about the natural world. Every living creature, from pond scum to animals to humans, angels, and right up to the big G.O.D., was part of a great chain of being that organized the world. For a species to die would be to remove a link in that chain, and why would God do that? Like, why would he invest all that time and energy into designing an animal only to let it fail? It was only in 1798, only a century after the dodo's probable extinction, that French zoologist Georges Cuvier presented a paper pointing out that the fossil elephant jaws found near Paris were, in fact, extremely like specimens of modern elephant jaws held by the National Museum, but crucially not exactly like them. Fossils, he successfully argued, were not simply the bones of ancient animals as had been described before, but some were examples of animals that had died out and no longer existed. And this exciting possibility fixed attention on the dodo, since it was a documented animal that no longer existed, but that also several European museums held anatomical examples or drawings of. Plus, the dodo was weird-looking enough where several people had actually taxidermied specimens to take back to Europe, and others had even managed to bring back living birds as an oddity to be displayed for money. One English diarist recorded paying to see a live dodo displayed in London in 1638, and it's possible that several museum specimens originally came from these shillbirds. In fact, it's been suggested that these birds, plump from overfeeding on non-native foods, created the myth of the dodo as fat and clumsy. Taxidermy specimens that had been overstuffed increased this impression, as did possibly life drawings that showed the bird fluffing to make itself look bigger in the face of threats. And finally, I know this last bit isn't scientific, but they do kind of just look a little stupid, right? I know that sounds harsh, but we do tend to associate animals with wide round eyes, like cows and chickens, with subpar intelligence, while then ascribing cunning to animals with narrower eyes, like cats and foxes, as illustrated here. Combine all that with Darwin's theories and the stories of being eaten to death, and you can start to see why museums displaying dodo specimens tended to use it as sort of an illustrative model of an animal that couldn't adapt and died as a result. Also keep in mind that that very theorizing occurred probably about 150 years after anyone had seen a dodo firsthand in the wild or knew anything about its actual behaviors. However, the final nail in the dodo's coffin came not from a scientist, but a writer. In his book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll used the dodo as a comic figure, casting him as the ringleader in an extended scene satirizing, we think, the silliness of party politics in his day. The illustration accompanying the book fixed the image of the dodo in popular culture as an icon of stupidity, foolishness, and inability to change, which is often how we still see it. So, Dodo, if I can speak to you directly for a moment, you too have every right to be angry. Because while humans didn't technically eat you to death, we did still bring about your untimely end and then just dragged your name through the mud. So while we hope that we can learn from your demise to better help us work towards something like that never happening again, we also don't need to keep shaming you. So I would like to wrap up this episode by acknowledging what you were. A survivor, a tough mountain climber, a very fluffy boy, and the victim of a historical game of pseudoscience telephone. The biggest beam thanks to Ahmed Ziad Turk, Angelo Valenciana, Arcalite Games, Dominic Valenciana, Izzy Coyne, Joseph Blame, Kuyakoy, and Michael Hoggett for being our legendary patrons. 